All right, David Harry here. And this particular video is an addendum to one that I'd done a short while ago with regard to the smart functionality of the Grass Valley HQ HQX codec. But before I kick into all this, I would just like to give a massive shout out and thank you to Mr. Anton Strauss, because recently I've been looking at upgrading to Edius 9, because I believe that some of its new functionality is going to assist me with my workflows, and Anton has been giving me a ton of help with regard to that. Also, Anton actually has a video production company in Australia as well. So if you're in Australia and you require some video production services and facilities, head on over to Anton's website. Also, Anton is actually a Grass Valley reseller as well. So for anybody in the world, if you're interested in such things as Grass Valley Edius and whatnot, again, head on over to Anton's website. I will have links to his website in the description to this video. So once again, thank you, Anton. Okay, so what the point of this video is, is just to clear up a slight anomaly uh, which appeared in my last video. And when I say appeared, it's not like I don't think many people would ever have noticed it, but I just wanted to clear it up anyways, just to make sure that for those who understood the anomaly, that, you know, it definitely isn't anything that interferes with the functionality or the smart functionality of the codec that being the HQ, HQX variants. Because what it is, with inside the exporter, there is a certain scenario which will skew the results, and unfortunately, I'd used that scenario in the previous video. So this one is just to prove that regardless of the skewed scenario, the actual workflow is sound and actually does what it's supposed to do. Okay, so what it is here, I've got a piece of media. Let me just put some IO points around that. I'll give it a quick blast at this media, just so that we can see this media has been exported offline. So as we can see here, all this text is all mangled and there's a bunch of macro blocking going on there, or all this little mosaic patterning in the video. Okay, so that's just to show us that that is an offline file. Now, the reason why I'm using an offline file is because this will show clearly exactly the point that I was making with regards to using a smart codec and obviously HQ, HQX in this particular example. So what I'm going to do now is export this codec or export this video to another variant of the same codec, but using much higher settings. Now, just before I do this, let's make one thing perfectly clear. If you have a piece of media, regardless of its bit depth or its color space or its chroma subsampling or anything like that, if you use anything beyond its original settings as a further export. Whilst you may have the convenience of having it in another format or a higher version of a format, you will not increase the picture qualities or the visible picture quality. So I'll just make that clear, because what I'm not trying to do here is like, like increase the quality to be better. I'm just showing the actual functionality of the codec and the way that it will not increase anything about a particular file if it doesn't need to. So with that in mind, what I will do is go to the exporter and then I'm going to choose HQX. So as we can see, that was an offline file. So what I'm gonna do here is select online super fine. So what you may think initially is, well, you know, we're going from offline all the way up to online. So surely it's gonna bump up the file size because if this were a different codec being transcoded to another codec, that is exactly what would happen if you give enough parameter space in order to increase the file size. So what I'm gonna do here is let's increase it to online super fine and I'll call this test two. Okay, so let me export that. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna bring that back to the timeline. Let's have a quick look at it. I mean, for all intents and purpose, this is gonna look identical because it was terrible in the first place. So like I say, we're not gaining anything. So as you can see there, it's all still mangled and all the rest of it. So what I'm gonna do now is let's go and identify what's going on with these files. So there's the original offline file there. Now there's its file size. So like I say, you may think, well, okay, well, we bumped this up to like super quality as far as the output was concerned. Again, 
you know, no increase in picture quality, but surely something must have changed. So let's have a look. So let's go to properties here. But look at this, bit for bit, this is identical. So basically what we've done, we've took a previous HQX file, which was set at a very low setting, and then we've taken it out to one which was super duper settings as it were, and nothing about its characteristics and like file size right down to the bit has changed or down to the byte has changed. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, this hopefully clears up the slight anomaly which maybe most people didn't even recognize in the previous video. And also, once again, goes to prove exactly just how super cool the HQ HQX codec is by Grass Valley. Okay, so I think with that done then, I'm about to get off and go and get myself a cup of coffee. And once again, thank you very much to Anton. So the last thing that remains for me to say right now is I'm David Harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now